It has been less than a year since Cascader Mobile was launched for iOS and now it is finally available on Android as well and with a bunch of new features added since the first release. You can do almost everything that's available on desktop and you can easily move your project files back and forth between mobile and desktop, but only if you have a pro subscription. Still you can download it and try it out for free right away. I've been testing it to see how well it actually works and in this video I want to show you the basics of creating animations, how to move files between devices and what the pricing and limitations look like so you will know if it's worth adding to your workflow or not. First when you log into your account you will be greeted with a short tutorial then you will see the list of your scenes which is of course empty at the moment. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. Here you can choose between the different default characters or you can even create a new ready make character. I will go with that take a picture and after a few seconds your character is rigged and ready to animate. Now just for the navigation I will switch to an external camera so you can better see what I'm doing. First of all to rotate around the viewport you need to use one finger and just tap and drag around away from your character. Then with two fingers you can pan the screen and by pinching those two fingers you can zoom in and zoom out. You can also use this pinching motion to zoom in and out in the timeline. And to focus any object you just click on it and then with this target icon it will be focused on the screen. And there are also more precise camera controls. You need to open the camera and turn on the viewport controls and this will open these arrows. Here you can switch between side views by tapping the arrows and the middle rectangle will snap to the closest view. And you can also switch between orthographic and perspective view with the cube. To pose the character you can select any controller just by tapping on it. Then you can move it directly in the 3D viewport but I found it a bit unpredictable, so I prefer to use the gizmo so I can unlock this point so it's reset. And you can enable the translation gizmos with this button and then move the character on a specific axis or a plane. And you can also see the rotation gizmos and you can here switch between the global and the local coordinates. For multiple selection you have two options, there is this multiple dots button Button. then you can click on to multiple controllers but I will disable the gizmos because it makes harder to select and then re-enable the gizmos to move those controllers again. Or the other option is to tap and hold on the screen and then this rectangle appears and you can select multiple controllers and move them together. If there is no active controller in your selection, so only the grey controllers, then all of them will be selected. Or if you have any active controller, then only those will be selected. To set a new keyframe, you can use the, the key button. And there is another way. You can collapse the timeline and press this plus button. And it will add a new keyframe at the end of the animation, by default 7 frames later. The number of these frames can be set here in the settings. This is really useful when you are just blocking out your animation and you don't care about the timing at all. Adjusting the timing is really straightforward also. You can go to a section in the interval between two keyframes and you can see these sliders. You can drag it or you can use the plus and minus buttons to set the timing. And also you can move keyframes on the timeline. First you need to select the keyframe. You can select the keyframe by clicking on it, then pressing it again and holding until this short animation and then you can drag it. You can also extend this selection to an interval and with the same way you can move this entire selected section on the timeline. To reset controllers you can select them and there is this pin icon 
on the top and if you click it it will be deactivated and it also works with multiple controllers and also you can lock controllers you need to first select them then use this big pin icon and it will show that familiar red rectangle and this means those points will stay at the same place the default interpolation is bezier clamped in an ik mode so this means that the arms are moving in a straight line for example but of course you can change it and at first it might feel a bit confusing but it's manageable so if i have nothing selected on the timeline i can open tracks and i can either select the whole character or i can go deeper so i can choose the arms this will change the interpolation for both of the arms and let's select the fk but this only changed the interpolation for the first section so if I would like to move, change it for multiple sections I can select an interval now you can see it shows that the interpolation type is mixed let's select FK so now the both of this section will use FK autophysics is also available on mobile but it does work quite a bit differently here Let's say I've got a jump animation blocked out with the right interpolations. I can now open the auto physics tool and enable it with the activity button. We have all the different components here from the physics corrector to the secondary motion and you can tweak the strength for each one. You can also see the fulcrum points with the green circles, you can change the offset of the physics ghost and you can choose to work on the selected interval, all the usual stuff. But the main difference is how you apply physics to your animation. When snapping is turned on, your character will follow the physics ghost, kind of like it is constrained to it. At that point you can even turn off the ghost. But if you now turn snapping off, only the key poses will be kept and the in-between frames will be still interpolated. So you can't really directly bake the physics ghost into your animation. The suggested workflow is to enable snapping, then decide which poses you want to keep. You set keyframes on that poses. Then if you want to refine your animation further, then you can disable snapping and all the key poses will be kept. A few extra tools that I would like to quickly mention are the ragdoll feature which is available under the auto physics and I haven't talked about the finger auto posing but that is also available you can enable the point controllers under the points menu. We also have ghosts for previous and next keyframes. There is the twin machine which is only available if you have pro i didn't know that anyway moving on there is also the mirror tool so you can copy poses from one side to the other you can import a video reference directly into the scene we have the in-betweening tool with all the different motion styles you can even add multiple characters into one scene if you want to create a fighting scene and last but not least there is also an ar mode Although, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work on my device. All of these tools are pretty straightforward, so I won't go into details now. The video is already getting a bit too long, and we still haven't covered how to move your files between desktop and mod mobile, so let's go to that next. The scene files are fully compatible with the desktop version as far as I know, but transferring them is only possible if you have a pro subscription. So let's start with opening a file that I have created on desktop. When you are on the loading screen you see this load button and that's where you can open a .cas file. For example, I will open my dragon kick scene from the previous video. It is also possible to import a scene file into an existing scene and this one actually works even without Pro. It might be a bug, but at least it's a workaround for now. And once your animation is ready, you've got several export options. You can export a video and that's the only option available for free and indie users. But the actually useful export options are for Pro only. We have GLB and Cascader scene files. And I believe iOS users also have the option for FBX export. 
So without a pro subscription, the mobile app is mostly for testing and learning the software. You won't be able to export or import animations similarly to the free desktop version. To be specific, here is a list what you cannot do without Pro. Load a scene file directly from the starting screen, export GLB or FBX files, export Cascader scene files. You are not able to import video reference and as we have seen, you are not able to use the twin machine. So yeah, if you want to actually use Cascader Mobile in your workflow, the Pro subscription is pretty much a must have. The base price is $33 a month if you pay it annually which is quite a big jump from the $8 indie plan but they have regular discounts quite often like at the time of recording of this video and also don't forget that with Pro you not only get the mobile version but also get features like retargeting and interaction with the environment plus a few other perks. While testing on tablet I had some small inconveniences for example controller selections is a bit of a struggle on a touch screen and I'm not a huge fan of how we set the interpolations for the different body parts but overall I had a lot of fun I will definitely keep using it and I want to see where it best fits into a workflow between the mobile and the desktop. But I'm also curious if you would like to see more mobile focused tutorials. Let me know in the comments please. But I will still mainly focus on desktop version. 